my lovelies, today's video is going to be my sort of one year historical sewing reflections um, as well as me trying to paint the cover of a book. Um, as you can see the book is um, Empress Elizabeth's um, diary, tag buch, I think that's how you say it, um, and it's actually just her poetry. Um, I can't, I'm currently learning German so obviously I can't read everything but I think it's one of the goals of mine to be able to read this book because I do adore her and of course I'm going to paint the famous Franz Xavier Winterhalter painting of Sissy or at least a very inspired one because I can't paint faces um, so that is going to be the painting today. Anyway. I will just get into some of the 10 things I have learned over the first year of my historical sewing or actually sewing in general because I actually picked it up. I really picked up sewing in like February 2020 so it really is one year sewing and historical sewing reflections. It's not really... Um, I haven't done any really prior, much prior sewing for this. So anyway. <laughs> The first thing that I've learned is that natural materials are really the best. So, and also polyester satin is like the worst freaking material ever. Um, I sort of only realized this after making two sort of tea gown, house gown things in polyester satin. And uh, I kind of regret that. I mean, they're very nice, but I also regret it because um, they don't, they aren't comfortable to wear at home. So I think, especially with undergarments, so if, if it's going to be close to your skin, I think linen and cotton, I mean, I love the feeling, feeling of linen and also cotton. Silks, I'm not quite so sure at the moment because I haven't actually made anything that has silk very close to the skin, but I actually, I think that silk is, I mean, obviously silk is probably the best material for historical costuming because it really has this really awesome sort of shine to it. Whereas polyester, so like polyester shanting, for example, shantung, um, it's actually a Chinese word, uh, by the way, like shantung uh, and then shantung. But anyway, uh, digression aside, <laughs> um, yeah, natural materials are the best uh, and they really give off a sheen that is beautiful but not plasticky at the same time and also yeah and then the second one is that which is sort of related to the first one dress for the weather you have not the one which you want which is very true if you live in a very humid country like i do uh, i always i sometimes mention it and i really i wonder if i mention it too much but i do live in singapore and i don't i know i don't say it very often because i don't like it but i also say the same thing every time i mention singapore so you probably know that by now um yeah okay here i to be honest, I don't really go out of the air conditioning room very often. So usually when I have to brave the heat, it's like maybe um, the walk from my gram, from my Uber to the school. Uh, but even then, you know, it gets a bit, it does get like on days where I'm not feeling very well, um, dressing like the way I do, because I do uh, whatever clothes that I sew on this channel, I wear them out. I kind of get a bit ill, but um, I'm just sort of trying to work on it. The next few dresses are going to be like sort of summer inspired, like puff sleeves and like linen, cotton, stuff like that. So yeah, unfortunately, sometimes y your dreams are crushed a little bit. You can't just wear bicycle sweaters out as much as I would want to. Yeah. So the third one is that ironing is great and uh, I only started ironing about a couple of months ago um, sort of maybe three quarters into my sewing journey and I realized that ironing really really improves the look of garments and I think one of my sewing teachers said it well that ironing is like half of sewing and I think that is very true and also it's actually really satisfying I think the most important thing is to have a corner or at least a very easy access to an iron like I use a short IKEA ironing board and I think it works great for um, a sort of small room situation and then if I need to iron um, my ironing board is behind the door and then I can just put it on the floor and then iron and I think it's really satisfying as well um, barring the fact that I sometimes get burnt by the iron 
And then the fourth one is that it's okay to be fast and sloppy at fast, but only if you remember to slow down at some point. So I was really sort of in almost a frenzy at the beginning to try and finish um, my garments, especially because I did not have uh, I did not have a me made wardrobe so called, and I really wanted to have one. So I really wanted to have like clothes that I can wear. And, and when, you know, I think the, the biggest thing of having Mimi and Rojo is when people realize that you sew and then they ask you every single time when they meet you, oh, did you sew this yourself? And I really want to say yes all the time. So that was what I wanted. And I think it's okay because I think when you're a beginner, to be honest, the most important thing is to make more garments because sewing is a practice thing. You know, the more you sew, the better you are. And I think when you're at the beginning, when you're trying out all these new things, I think the if you want to sort of go through it really quickly and sort of hastily almost, I think it's okay. You you learn a lot more, I think, doing that way um, rather than not doing anything. So, you know, but I think, you know, which goes into my fifth point, but take your time, you know. I mean, now I'm starting to realize that when I take my time, I actually love that I really relish in that sort of being able to slow down, taking details, do hand sewing, and then work on the tiny details. And, you know, I think it makes me happier and it also makes me more proud of the garment that I've made. So, you know, after the whole sort of excitement of the beginner's wave, I think it's it's only natural that slow down and sort of start working on things, kind of take stock once in a while, see what you need to improve, see, see what skills you want to, to work on the next time as well. And then the sixth thing is that envy really is a thing. Like there are some YouTubers that I absolutely adore and obviously I'm not going to name who because it's not relevant. Um, that I absolutely adore but I sometimes just can't like bring myself to watch their videos because it makes me like really really like envious of their life and sort of even down on myself that like oh why can't I do this you know why can't I be like this and blah blah blah. It's really stupid honestly like I don't know why. <laughs> I mean I I think envy is a very human uh, emotion um it's always the things that i feel like you always like like you're never really envious of like holly like hollywood stars like their life or whatever but you're envious of the people who seem very much like you um but they're just that much better you know and i think i've realized that the youtubers who I guess maybe have a very similar background as I am and sort of maybe have a very similar sort of character or just some similarities I think that you know that they have that kind of remind me of me um, and are also the people who I really really want to be and that is kind of what triggers that envious feeling and the thing is um, as obviously I it's something that I really want to stop because you know I, I love watching these youtubers and I and I know that they have so much to offer like you know it's so so much to learn from them but at the same time I think the you know the feeling of the green monster is not fun and it can sometimes be almost like it can stop your progress because you just sort of keep ruminating about the envy and about how I'm not good enough and not actually do the sewing so sometimes I just have to you know just keep away from some people's YouTubers, YouTubes for a while and you know just kind of and also break down the feeling I guess it's like ask myself why am I envious of this person you know what is this person what what you know what of this person do I really want to um, I guess grow into you know that and envy you know it really is a self-esteem thing you know on the days where I don't feel confident I feel a lot of envy because you know it, it's something that really it, envy is a feeling that really really gets worse the the worse you feel about you know your life in general and then the seventh one is sometimes you just have to force yourself to sew um, but find a way to enjoy it anyway so there was I mean you know, I have ups and downs in mental health and I think that, you know, sometimes I really just don't want to do anything. I, I don't want to do work, I don't want to do schoolwork, I don't want to read, I don't want to bloody do anything. But, you know, in the end, I know that I will feel better if I force myself to do a little bit of sewing or just a little bit of anything, even painting. I think, you know, when you come go into the dumps, I think that's kind of when you sort of have to find 
a way to feel productive like even if it's just painting something or like sorting out your closet sorting out your stash of fabrics you know looking at new projects you know i think or just you know sketching i think you know these small things really help um the feeling of sort of lack of productivity and sort of really down on yourself because i feel that sometimes when you're feeling down and then you don't do anything you just feel worse because you're like oh my god i didn't do anything today so yeah sometimes i just really have to force myself to sew and i think on foundations reveal group we were talk someone was talking about like one seam a day which is like you just do one seam a day it doesn't have to be so it doesn't have to be a lot like just do five minutes of sewing a day and you know if there are days that you want to do more great you know if you don't want to do it anymore it's fine you know just do one thing a day and I think that works quite well for me and then the eighth one is to constantly go back and re sort of relook and redo your old pieces so I'm actually doing this now I I had a chemise that I did actually not not too long ago but I didn't do it very well I was actually it was a bit of a rush job because I really needed a chemise so you know recently I went back and added some inset lace added some ribbons and I really like it now and I think I do that a lot for my projects like just go back and sort of you know work on the things that I didn't do like maybe I didn't do the binding very well and I just redo it didn't zoot didn't do the zip very well I need to redo the zip on one of my skirts because it is shit so yeah, I think going back and sort of reworking your old pieces, it brings, it makes you love them again. And, you know, even old clothes, I think, I think that's why maybe thrift flips or like quote unquote flipping your wardrobe is so attractive because it brings life into old pieces. And, you know, it's, it's in a whole line of, you know, um, reusing things and less comfort from blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. And the ninth one, um, sometimes you won't want to sew and that's okay. I mean, I will say that sort of forcing yourself to do a seam is good, but I think if you have to keep forcing yourself, it becomes a chore and sometimes you really just have to take a break. Maybe go do another hobby, you know, go read, go paint, go draw, maybe pick up another thing, go crochet or make lace. Um, but yeah, sometimes you really do have to take a break and I think sometimes it's okay to take a break because ultimately if you're not... As long as you're not costume designer, and I think, or like ha sewing is your job, you know, you it's a hobby after all. Which goes into my tenth point and probably the most important one is that, um, it, remember it's a hobby first, and you know just enjoy sewing. And sometimes, you know, if you're not enjoying sewing anymore, you can kind of break down like, oh, what do I actually like? Maybe I like you know the sort of repetitiveness of embroidery or the repetitive repetitiveness of hand stitching and maybe like you know do projects like that and do things that make you happy you know in the end you know you're not a factory you know you're not a garment factory you don't have to produce an inordinate amount of clothes so you know, just slow down and take take stock of what you like about the hobby and work on those areas i guess so yeah these are the 10 10 things that i've learned in my first year of historical sewing and i have thoroughly enjoyed it i think it has brought so much like so much joy and interest into my life you know it's not just it's not just the sewing part it's also the research and I realized like wow I have so much information now about the Victorian and Edwardian era that I had not known before and I think you know that that's superb and it's also historical sewing has introduced me to so many other things you know like um, you know it connects to like you know musicals because I like that sort of thing and then um, just costuming in general like movie costumes and it's just a, and, and also a question uh, it's such a wonderful hobby honestly and I am so grateful for everyone who's stuck along for this first year and I wish you all a, a good sewing day and a good sewing year month whatever and I will see you in the next video bye bye So on a bit here, um, I did end up loving the cover so much that I ripped it off the book. Um, the cover looks like this now and I think I'm going to make another cover for this. But I I kind of painted a little like cardboard piece and yeah, so now it's like next to my bed. And uh, yeah, I really love it. It's a great painting. Uh, except my book is probably not that happy right now. <laughs>